Okay, Foundations of Math 10, uh, section 4.3 is called Simplifying Radicals. Now, we have to remember, first of all, that radicals are any numbers that have that root sign, okay? A square root sign, or a cubed root sign, or a fourth root sign, and so on. So that's what radicals are. They involve the root sign. And there is a way that we can simplify radicals. And some simple examples of simplifying would be ones that we've already talked about. So, root 4. This is radical form. What number, what integer is this radical form for? For number what? 2. Yeah. The square root of 4 is 2. Now, we all know this. We all know this too, right? The square root of 25 simplifies to 5, right? Now, why is that? Well, the square root of 4 can be written as the square root of 2 times 2. Notice that this is a square root. We don't put the 2 there, but it's, it's a 2 that would go there if we put a number there, right? And notice that I have two 2's here. This is a group of 2. So, root 4 simplifies to plain old 2 because we have a group of two twos. And so this, basically, this grouping right here, you can pull the two out, and that's why this equals two. Similarly, root 25, that can be written as the square root of five times five. Notice we have a group of two. This is square root. So if we have a group of two, that can be simplified to just plain old five. Let's take, for example, this one. The cubed root of 8. Now, you guys probably know that, but how can we rewrite 8? And we're obviously, we're doing prime factors here so far, aren't we? So, how can I factor 8 into prime factors? What's that going to be? 2 times 2 times 2. Notice we have a group of 3 identical factors. And if all of the factors are identical and it's a group of three, then this is a perfect cube number. That's why this simplifies to two. This is actually asking us what number multiplied by itself three times, that's why we have the cube root, gives us 8. That's the question. And when we see that 2 is multiplied by itself three times, the answer to this question right here is 2. So this means what number multiplied by itself gives us 8? Square root, we're looking for groups of 2. Cube roots, we're looking for groups of 3. What about fourth roots? Anyone want to venture a guess as to what we're actually looking for? Anybody want to guess? Groups of four. Okay, wow, very good. So let's say um, I have the fourth root of 16. All right, so if I factor 16, I get the fourth root of, this is two times two times two times two. And so because we have a group of four, uh, this comes out as a 2. So this question is what number times itself 4 times gives us 16? The answer is 2. So that's with perfect squares, perfect cubes, and perfect fourths there. What about, now this is where we get, this is where it gets a little bit tough, okay? But what about if I have something like, what's the cube root of 16? And you're thinking to yourself, oh, goodness, this is not a perfect cube. I don't know what to do. I guess we have to leave it. Well, actually, you don't leave it. You can simplify it down as much as possible. This isn't going to give you a nice, round, whole number answer, okay? It's going to be irrational. But how do we go about simplifying it? One of the ways, and this is the first way that I'm going to teach you this, is to 
prime factor the number. And so 16 is actually 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We just saw that over here. So if you prime factorize this, write it in its prime factors, you would see that I have an identical group of four twos. The question you would ask yourself is, do I have an identical group of three identical things, like a group of three identical things, and you would say, hey, I actually do, right there. You have something left over that's not a problem. Okay? So, okay, watching what we do here now. The same rules apply as if we were working up here. Okay? See this group of three? It can come out from underneath the cube root sign as a whole number. So guess what? This group of three twos can come out of the radical as a plain old two. You can take this out. But what we have left over is still a two underneath the cube root sign. So whatever you don't remove, you have to leave under there. And so this is the simplified version of the cube root of 16. Because this 2 was left underneath this, right? Now, just to confirm this, I'll get your question in a second. Just to confirm this, what I want to do is I want to get the calculator out here. And on your calculator, again, this one, graphing calculator, not as clean and handy, but if I do cube root, so i got to go down here to this function right here, cube root of 16 is this number right here, irrational, 2.5198421. If I do 2 times the, okay, I'm going to have to do this here, the cube root of 2, which is our simplification of this, look at this, I get the exact same number. So it's, it's just, it's simplified. That means it's not a different number, it's just in a different form, a different version of the same number. All right, so what if we have the square root of 50? Okay. Well, what you'd want to do is you'd want to factor 50, and if you need to do that over here, no problem. Divide by 2, that's 25. Divided by 5, that's 5. So we've got 2 times 5 times 5. So, whoops, that's going to be 2 times 5 times 5. You notice that this is a square root, so I'm looking for groups of two identical factors. Right? So there you have two fives. So you say, all right, these guys right here can come out of the root sign. It's like they got to take it out because there's two of them. So this equals five and not 25. Don't bring the 25 out here. It's just the, the number that is repeated. So it's the five. And then you have to leave this guy in here because he cannot be simplified anymore. So this becomes five times the square root of two which you would say this, this answer right here, would be 5 root 2. That's how you would say that. Alright, so let's say the square root of, let's do another one. Let's say the square root of um, 200. Okay. The square root of 200. Uh, no, let's do, let's do, sorry, let's do 400. Just so we can get here. Square root of 400. All right. Uh, this one, yeah, this one is, <laughs> let's do the prime factor method here real quick. That's not the one I wanted either, but anyways, 400 divided by 2, you get 200. Divided by 2, you get 100. Divided by 2. You get 50 divided by 2, you get 25 divided by 5, you get 5. Okay? So if you're doing this prime factor method, um, don't be alarmed if you get something like this. Let me just show you how to do this first. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Now you're thinking to me, well, wait a minute. I, okay, I have, I see a couple things. This is the first thing I see. I have a group of two, I have a group of two, and I have a group of two. All right? So method one, you would say, hey, all of the factors are taken care of. So guess what? From this group, I need to bring out a two. From this group, I need to bring out another two. And from this group, 
I need to bring out a 5. And so that equals 20, and that is the answer. That's one way you could do it. Okay, from each identical group of two, you pull out, you know, one of those numbers. The other way you could do it, the other way you could do it is like this. Root 400 equals root. Now, these numbers you could arrange like this. Watch this. 2 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 5. Right? That's the same factors, just arranged in a different order. And look at this. You see how you have identical groups of factors? And so, so what is this? This is 2 times 2 times 5. There's two groups of those, so that's 20 times 20, so that's how you get 20. That's another way you can do it. And finally, to get to your suggestion of a more difficult one, let's do a more difficult one. And let's do... I don't know. Let's do the square root of 136. Why don't we do that? Can we simplify the square root of 136? Well, if I prime factor 136, what do you get? What's half of 136? 68. What's half of 68? 34. Okay, uh, half of 34 is? 17. Okay, there's a prime number. i got to stop. Okay, does everyone agree that's the prime factors for 36, 136? Okay, so I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 17. Alright, is there a group of two identical factors that you can find in there? Uh, yes, right here. Okay, so if you have two identical factors, and that's all you have, right? These two are not the same. So this can come out. That comes out as a 2. Now this is gone. Right? Because really, 2 times 2 is 4, right? So square root of 4, see that? Becomes 2. And what's left? 2 times 17 is 34. So that is your simplification. And yes, the, the question that you asked a few minutes ago was, what if you have more than you know one factor in here? Yes, you multiply them together, and that's how you simplify. Okay, two root thirty-four. Now I'm going to show you one more way to look at this. This is how I look at this. This is how I do it. Square root of, um, I guess let's do um, thirty-six. Just regular thirty-six. No, no. Why am I doing this to myself today? Um, let's do. Um, uh, uh, square root of 63. Let's try this one. Now, this is this is how I do it. You could prime factor, but I don't bother prime factoring. Why? Because for most of these numbers, if you know the list of perfect squares, and you can divide mentally in your head fairly well, you can do this a lot quicker. Okay? And I'll show you this. 63. It's a square root of 63. So my question to myself is, are there any factors of 63? Can I split up 63 and into uh, factors where one of the factors is a perfect square? Because the perfect squares in here are what we're after. And you say to yourself, yeah, actually, 9 times 7. That's what 63 is, and 9 is one of those perfect squares. You see that? Now, 9 can be square rooted into an even number. So what you do is you say 9, the square root of 9 actually becomes 3. So this 9 can come out as a 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. And then you leave the 7 in there and there's your answer. Okay? Now this also works because there is a important principle that you might want to use. And again, this is sort of like a third method, but I don't like calling it a third method, but uh, let's see. Um, so let's say I want to talk about the square root of 48. All right. What's the largest perfect square factor of 48? And again, you want to go with the largest perfect square to, to make this, to make this a quicker process. 
What's the largest perfect square? Well, the perfect squares are what? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, right? So what's the largest perfect square factor of 48? Nope. 4 is one of them, but 16 is the largest factor. 16 times 3, is that right? Yes? All right, so watch this. You can also, this is a this is a property of radicals. You can write this, 48, like this. The square root of 16 times the square root of 3. You can actually split it up like this into two separate radicals, each factor having their own little root sign. Now, now this one, a lot of students like this method because then they can see that, hey, I know what this simplifies to, right? That's just a plain old 4, square root of 16. And then what, what's left over? This doesn't simplify. So there's your answer. All right? So that's, that's simplifying radicals, okay? Um, that's simplifying radicals. I think I'm going to stop there for that lesson. You can, um, we're, we're going to focus on some questions that just deal with simplifying radicals. We'll have another part. So this is 4.3. This is really was part one. And um, yeah, we're going to talk uh, probably tomorrow I'll get into the mixed radicals, okay? Uh, and mixed and entire radicals. But that's simplifying. So there's your uh, part A, or part number one for 4.3. This is just questions dealing with simplifying radicals, square roots and cube roots. Okay, so get some practice uh, doing that.